Hi Saints, I just got home from work, it's 2 in the morning, it's pretty late, but um, I was checking my email and some Facebook messages and you guys had told me that um, there are people saying that the Lord is coming before the presidential elections of 2016. And they're stating it as fact, they're stating it boldly, and um, they're obviously ignoring scripture. And these particular channels are gaining a large following based on that deception alone. And I put out a video the other day telling you about that. And there's lots of channels doing this. I'm not saying your channel or whatever, but there's lots of channels actually doing this. That they are telling their following, telling the public that for a fact, Jesus is coming before the presidential election. Now, this is my question to them. Just as I posed a question to a false prophet before of Cat C, I think her name is, I'm going to pose this question to un numerous false prophets that are saying this. Okay? What will you do if Jesus doesn't come before the election? You will be considered a false prophet, according to the book of Deuteronomy. If you prophesy something and it doesn't come to back, that doesn't come to pass, that which what the Lord well, if, I mean back up. If you prophesy something and it doesn't come to pass, you're a false prophet. God never sent you plain and simple. Will you repent? Now, um, Will you repent and apologize to those that you're going to deceive on air? My other question is, I'm not trying to accuse you. I'm just stating a fact here. Um, why do you misconstrue the scripture in the book of Acts that says, when the Lord says he doesn't do anything without telling us, he doesn't plan or do anything without telling his servants the prophets, servant, without tell, telling his servants the prophets first. Why do you misconstrue the scripture a lot? Because God is only going to reveal what he sees fit to reveal to his servants, for one. For two, the scriptures clearly says, No man knows the day nor the hour, not the Father, nor the angels. I'm sorry, let me back up. Let me correct what I'm saying. No man knows the day nor the hour, not Jesus, not the angels, not man, only the Father. So in other words, God's not going to tell you when he's coming. And why do you ignore the other scripture in Acts chapter 1 verse 7 that says, Man does not have control over the seasons. And I'm paraphrasing here. Okay, man doesn't have control over the seasons, nor authority over it. Only God does. That includes seasons means years, days, months, events, everything, including the rapture. So God's not going to tell you when the rapture is going to be. Why do you ignore those scriptures? Why do you misconstrue the scriptures? Why do you only take out bits and pieces of the verses to support your false prophecy that Jesus is coming before the rapture? I mean before the election. You have to understand that what you're doing is extremely dangerous. You are causing people to fall off the path. And what you're doing is dangerous because the reason why I say that is because you have babes in Christ out here. If they see all these false prophets falsely prophesying things left and right, how do you think they're going to perceive Christ? You're going to think Christ is a liar when Christ is not a liar. God is not a liar. 
God is not the author of confusion. God tells the truth. God knows everything when it's going to happen. He's not coming before the election. He's not going to tell you when he's going to come. Why do you also ignore the scripture regarding the parable about the thief and the strongman of the house? Which I'm going to explain it briefly says that if the thief told the strongman when he's going to come, don't you, you know, the strongman would be waiting for the thief, wouldn't he? So the thief is never going to announce when he's going to come. He is just going to show up unannounced, unexpectedly. That's what the Lord means when he says he's coming like a thief in the night. He's going to come when you least expect it. He's not going to tell you anything. Because now we give you an opportunity, right? If God says, okay, I'm coming on this so-and-so date, time, and hour. That will give you an opportunity to live in sin up until the last second. And then repent. Instead of living for Christ your whole life, turning away from sin, and keep watching for him like he says to do in the word. Why do you ignore that scripture? Why are you telling people that Jesus is coming before the elections? You don't know that. You don't know the day nor the hour when the Father is coming. Acts chapter 1 verse 7 specifically says, Man does not know nor have control over the seasons nor authority over which the Father has control over. And why do you ignore the scripture that says no man knows the day nor the hour, not even the Father, I'm sorry, not even Jesus, nor the angels, only the Father. So when you say that you know when Jesus is coming, you're exalting yourself above the angels and above Jesus because the scripture says Jesus does not know the day either. Okay? So, you're doing something very dangerous because if people become dependent on what you're saying and they believe what you're saying, do you know how disappointed they're going to be when it, your, your prophecy does not come to pass because it won't? Do you know how disappointed they're going to be? Do you also know that people have committed suicide over situations like this? That's right, over the rapture. Where prior date setters have set dates for the rapture, didn't happen. They were so depressed, they committed suicide. Don't you realize God's going to hold you accountable for the souls you caused to fall off the path? And for people that are listening to this false doctrine, why don't you open up your Bibles? I'm not trying to blame you. I'm correcting you in love. Open up your Bibles. Go to Jesus yourself. Ask for discernment. Because what these people are saying is not biblically sound. It is not aligning with the scriptures. God says he only knows when he's coming. No man knows the day nor the hour, not Jesus, nor the angels, nor, nor human beings. Only the Father. Acts chapter 1 verse 7 says, Humans do not have control over the seasons over which the Father has control and authority over. In the book of Matthew 24, I believe it is, and all over scripture, okay, again, it says about the parable about the thief, and that God's coming like a thief in the night, and no man knows the day nor the hour, not the angels, not even Jesus Christ, not human beings either. We know Jesus is God, okay? That, you know, no man knows the day or the hour. Again, not even Jesus, not even the angels. And the Lord's coming like a thief in the night when you least expect it. And again, Jesus is God. So, why do you ignore those scriptures as well? God's very clear in the word. He's not going to tell people when the rapture is going to happen. So people like to make an excuse for their date setting by saying, Oh, well, Jesus said he's, gonna, he's not going to plan anything unless he tells the servants the prophets first. But they don't read the other parts of scripture that says, God will reveal only what he feels you need to know. Do you think he told the prophets of old, the righteous ones, when the rapture is going to be? No. They never date said it. False prophets are not prophets of God. They are prophets of Satan. And if you are saying this heresy, 
You are a prophet of Satan. Please, stop saying this. Those listening to this, open up your Bible. Open your Bible and go pray to the Lord and get off of YouTube. Take a break from YouTube. Okay? Because these people like this are putting your salvation at risk. And I'm not saying this to attack you. This is correction and love. There are so many false prophets saying this. I've gotten emails from subscribers, from people on Facebook, from people that, not, that are not subbed to me, at least 75 emails alone. So I believe God was using them for me to warn you people, if you're listening to this, to please test the spirits. Okay? Test the spirits. Jesus says, don't be deceived. If you go to Matthew chapter 24 and 25, he actually warns all over scripture. All over scripture. So I'm not saying this again to be mean to you or to attack you. You know the disciples in Matthew 24 asked the Lord what were going to be the signs of the times that we're in the last age. Jesus basically told them to beware of false prophets and false Christ. If you go to verse 24 in Matthew 24, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. That's what's going on. So many people are falling for this deception. So many of them. And then, here's what's even worse. They're assuming that they're going to make the rapture, but only Christ knows that. Only Christ knows that. He's coming for a bride without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. So wouldn't you say that falsely prophesying is a sin in itself? Or wouldn't you even say that causing people to fall off the path or people adhering to false prophets and not seeking God's counsel, isn't that a sin? We should be watching for Christ. We are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. That's why it's important for us to confess Repent of our sins, turn away from it, and live for Christ. You know what I mean? I'm saying this to you guys out of love. If you go to Matthew chapter 24, I'm sorry, 25. Okay? Um, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, know not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And verse 37, but in the days of no, where so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So basically the Lord explains that people were going about their daily business, whether they were working, getting married, or what have you. And all of a sudden, God said to Noah, get in the ark, the flood's coming. The flood came, people weren't even prepared. All right? People are not even prepared. If you go to Matthew chapter 25 again, okay, it explains about the parable about the thief as well. Verse 43. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 42. God says to watch. Watch wherefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. That means you, me, no one's going to know when Jesus is coming. You can't say Jesus is coming before the presidential election. You know how do you know how ludicrous that sounds? And if you go to verse 43, but know this that if the good men of the house had known in what in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. I'm sorry, broken up. So God is saying if the good men, if the strong men of the house knew when the thief was coming, he would have been waiting. 
So the thief is not going to tell the strong man when he's coming. He's going to show up unannounced when he's expected. That's what the verse means, that God's coming like a thief in the night. He's not going to tell you when he's coming. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give him meat in due season. That's verse 44, 45. Okay, and you go to verse 47. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayed his coming, and shall begun, begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat drink with, with the drunken. So this isn't, this isn't um, to those that say God, you know, to those that complain that God is, is not coming, God is delaying his coming. This also applies to date setters that claim to get a, a word that God's coming on this day, and then they're going to accuse God for delaying his coming. For delaying um, his coming, and I'm gonna I'm gonna back up what I'm saying. This goes to the day setters that falsely prophesy a certain day Jesus is coming. Okay, then they're gonna falsely accuse Jesus for saying, "Oh, you delayed the, you're delaying your coming. You said you were coming on this date, but you're not coming at all." This applies also to those that listen to these day setters and then say, um. Well, Jesus, you said you were coming on this day. You're delaying your coming. You can't blame God. You made the choice to listen to people like this. You false prophets made the choice to falsely prophesy this. I'm not scolding you. I'm correcting you in love. And if you go to verse 50 in Matthew 25, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of. So God is telling you to look for him constantly, not just part time. You have to watch for him. You have to live holy. We all do. Not just one person, not just me, everybody, everybody got to live holy because Jesus is coming for a bride without spot or without blemish. You know, I, I was going to go right to bed, but I saw this email and I felt I had to speak on this. People are actually saying Jesus is coming before, uh, before the 22nd, or I'm sorry, before November 8th. This is, one of the channels that's doing it is called Dustin Wright Prophecy. He's a false prophet. He, he date said it, the rapture back, he had videos up where he date said it 2013 as the Lord coming in December. That never happened. He was exposed and he deleted all those videos. Now he's date setting again. I exposed him before to when he first falsely prophesied about the rapture. It was back in 2013. And there's another notorious date setter by the name of Rody 61169 If you look at his channel, you'll see scores of, of date setting that he did. He prophesied the rapture 2012, 2013. Every prophecy failed. But he just keeps lying. You see, sometimes these false prophets are in over their head. They refuse to repent. And they keep doing it. And then, and then they rationalize their false prophecies. You know how they rationalize it? They said, well, Jesus decided not to come. He's going to come at another time. Jesus changed his mind. Jesus, or well, Jesus is not a liar. Okay? Jesus doesn't change his mind. It's like they were saying that Jesus was breaking his promises. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's consistent with everything. He keeps all of his promises in his word. I have my KJV right here. He keeps all of his promises. He's not going to break his promise to you all. The rapture is one of the biggest promises that he has. And it's a beautiful event. So those of you that are listening to people like this, I urge you to go into your prayer closet and open up your Bibles and just watch for the Lord's coming and preach the gospel to those that are willing to listen instead of, you know, debating about the rapture. You know, there are brothers and sisters in Christ that are getting 
martyred right now. They're not thinking about the rapture. They're thinking about, you know, not renouncing the name of Christ. They're only thinking about the Lord. That's it. The rapture is a beautiful event. It's going to happen. Jesus prophesied and he promised it. It's going to happen. I mean, look at the events in the world. They're getting so bad. But beloveds, it's not going to happen before the election. God's not going to tell you that. You're going to be here with me after the election. Assuming, you know, President Obama doesn't pull some scam to stay in office. You know, Jesus is coming. There's no doubt about that. I put out a video today saying, would you accept the invitation? So will you accept the invitation to the wedding feast? Meaning to get to that to get to get to that point, will you live holy for Christ? Will you repent of your sins? And for the false prophets that prophesied this, will you humble yourself and repent? And you know, will you say sorry to those that you deceived? Jesus is not coming before the presidential election. I can guarantee that, and others can too. It's in his word. Now, if, if Jesus did come, it would be his decision. And he wouldn't tell anyone. He's not going to tell you that. He's not going to tell me. He's not going to tell anyone. He never told the prophets of old the day he was coming. The day that was going to be his second coming. They had visions of it, yes. But he's not going to tell them that. Because it doesn't make any sense biblically. You know what I mean? I can understand where Christ is coming from. Because, you know, again... If he tells you people when he's coming, it gives you a chance to live the way you want to live, disobedient to God, up until the last second. The last second, then you repent so you can make it in the rapture without any effort. Any effort meaning repenting of our sins and living holy for the Father. Stay strong, saints, because Jesus is coming. We just don't know when. Only Father God does, and Jesus is God. And we have to keep watching for Him and winning souls to heaven. Because, yeah, I agree there's not much time left. I, I don't know how much time there is. But we have to win souls to God. So we can be counted worthy to escape what's to come. I hope you receive this message in love, in correction in love. I'm not scolding you, it's to correct you. Pray to God, to Jesus. Step away from YouTube. Ask the Father, yourself, and He will reveal to you that what I'm telling you is correct. No one knows the day or the hour. It's in the Bible, the Word of God. Stay well.